So hi, I'm David Lebo and today I'm going to present you my PhD and what I worked on my first year. But before we start, I will play a game trailer and uh, you may notice that there is something maybe quite unusual with this trailer and uh, you will try to guess what it is. In a snow-covered fjord, a Viking longship heads to open water. A blonde Viking hangs from the stern of the vessel, a Ubisoft logo. Next, longships navigate a storming sea. A bird soars overhead as lightning flashes. In Assassin's Creed Valhalla, you will relive the epic saga of the Viking invasion of England. A longship crashes into a fortress wall. Now the blonde Viking surveys a siege. You play as Eivor, a Viking from Norway, who will lead his or her battle-hardened warriors across the North Sea to the British Isles. This trailer had audio description, which is a verbal commentary providing visual information for those unable to perceive it themselves. It was published last year by Ubisoft, um, and it was one of the first game trailers with audio des description, so that's why I'm showing that to you. In my PhD, I want to advance audio description in gaming. My PhD project focuses on gaming and streaming and aims to provide access to this uh, media to very impaired people by generating real-time audio description. I will also present an early Minecraft prototype at the end of this presentation. But first, let's start with some background. So what is live streaming? Live streaming is when a player is sharing its gameplay to spectators by live streaming it. Twitch is one of the main uh, platforms of live streaming, but Facebook Gaming as well as YouTube Live also compete. It's a new entertainment media that gathers millions of spectators every day. And actually, there is an average of 30 million daily visitors on Twitch. While we're into numbers, it is important to know that 21% of the UK population is disabled. And my PhD is really about providing access to disabled persons to this new media and to gaming in general. If we um, start link the accessibility topic and the lasting one, we will find this web page. This is a Twitch accessibility statement. It is basically a web page where Twitch states what they are doing in terms of accessibility. What is interesting is that if we scroll down a bit, you will see some exceptions, and I will read that aloud. An exception is WCHG success criteria audio description is not feasible for us to create accurate audio description for the millions of hours of video content stream or platform daily. And in this exception, we can find several in interesting stuff. First, it is citing the WCHG, which is a Web Content Accessibility Guidelines. It's guidelines published by the World Wide Web Consortium, a private public organization who publishes a lot of web standards and guidelines. So with that, we can think that my PhD might be uh, about web activity. But live streaming is a new media, and uh, we are talking about the description, which is about media activity. And finally, Twitch is mainly about gaming content, and we are talking about improving games activity. So with this exception, we discover that my PhD might be in the intersection of web, gaming, and media accessibility. Now let's focus on audio description. So audio description has been proven effective for movies, TV shows, theater plays, museums, and more. For games, it's really a new topic. You can find some prototypes with full audio description, like 2D puzzle games. But for 3D commercial games, we don't see that yet. The researcher uh, states that the industry may start with cutscenes, as it is uh, kind of similar to uh, movies for audio description. I also need here to state that um, the US Communication and Video Accessibility Act mandates some accessibility features for in game communication. That's why we can find some text to speech or, or speech special text feature uh, for in-game chats in many games. Now let's go back to my research question. So my research question is, 
To that extent, code generated audio description be used to make live stream games accessible to visually impaired people while answering a balance between information and entertainment. In essence, my uh, PhD is like removing uh, this exception from the Twitch activity statement, but for all platforms. Today, we're going to focus on uh, the technological challenges of my PhD. So I'm presenting here a schema of a possible solution and its implementation. So on the left, you have a streamer that is playing a game that is streamed to a live streaming service thanks to a streaming software. The live streaming is then delivered to spectators. I'm proposing to add another service which gets uh, game events and which output audio description to spectators. So it's a basic client-server architecture in parallel to the uh, live streaming service. And now uh, we're going to focus on the game events, how to get game data. So I identified four main ways to uh, get game data. And I will uh, detail here the pros and cons for each of them. So the first solution is about sending direct requests to a server. So it's really a low-tech solution where uh, we uh, add a piece of code in the game that sends web requests. Here, uh, the game developers are responsible. By that, I mean that they need to be in the loop. And if they don't want to spend time on this activity feature, we as researchers and players can do a thing. We can find the same issue for the second solution, but here I'm proposing to use telemetry tools. Tools already embedded in many games for data analysis. Basically, I'm proposing to use this data for audio description. Uh, as it is already embedded into many games, it will be easier for game developers to implement. And that will lead to a wider availability. The third solution is about public game APIs. So this is uh, something we can find on uh, esports games, so games played in competitive events that are actually often live streamed. And they propose um, some tools for developers. For example, you can make data visualization with this kind of, of tools. And I'm proposing to use uh, again this data for audio description. Here, uh, not all games uh, have this kind of tools. And um, we can actually find this also this issue in the last uh, uh, solution, which is about modding. And actually, I will show a demo about uh, a Minecraft mod just after uh, that. So what is modding? Modding is when a player uh, modify a game with some code. Historically, uh, the game Doom was, the first to, was one of the first to do that. And we can find uh, nowadays many games ca that can be modded. Here, the good thing is that not only recent games could benefit from audio description. I uh, will go more in depth uh, about the solution with a demo. So, demo time. Today, I'm going to present a Minecraft mod. So, first, I choose Minecraft because it has a huge community of players and modders. And actually, I didn't build a mod from scratch, but I took uh, an open source mod from the community. Um, I took the Accessibility Plus mod uh, published last year uh, in 2020 by Luis Sanchez. And I modify a bit uh, this open source mod in order to export data out of Minecraft. So now I'm going to show you a video uh, demonstrating uh, this uh, mod. So in this video, there is a Minecraft window on the foreground and a web browser on the background. The web browser is connected to my uh, server, to my API. It will receive data from Minecraft and output audio description uh, thanks to a text-to-speech software. So let's go. Birch sign says, 1. Hello. 2. TFDITG. 3. Symposium for World Sand Carved Pumpkin Jack O' Lantern Sand Oak Log Spruce Log Birch Log Sand 
Dark Oak sign says, one, yes, there is, two, something, three, written here, four. So on Minecraft, uh, I was pointed my character to some object and some blocks. And for now, the mod only with a lot of text written on signs or the block's name. It's really a technical prototype. And I want to also state that the audio description is really coming from the web browser. Um, and that uh, the web browser uh, open uh, a URL that could be open f from anywhere in the world. So basically, uh, what you saw was online. To be continued, because there are still a lot to do. Uh, I need to investigate what to describe and how to make the experiment great. Because again, it was only a technical prototype. And about the question of how, uh, there is also the question of the method. About the method, I will do user testing with visually impaired gamers. Uh, but not on prototype like the one I showed today, but rather on a vertical slice. So a small portion of the software representing the overall experience. So basically, I will choose a game, get a live stream footage of it, and write the raw auto description data, and embed everything into a software that should let the users customize the experience. As for the words, uh, the activity community always says nothing about us without us, and I strongly believe that for every tech we create, the end user should be involved in the process. And that's what I will do in my PhD. So thanks for listening. If you have any question, um, you can contact me on uh, this address, phd at davidlibo.fr. And you can also, also find the slides on dav.li slash tftipgs21. Or the website of my PhD is game2speech.com. Thanks again.